Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Julie, I have a question for you. Yes. So our little lovely daughter, Zoe Grace Harris, who, by the way, did you see that picture I put of us on Instagram? Oh, you mean the one where she was on the, uh, we call it the hike, but I don't know what she's nick- nicknamed it, forced hiking? Or... Exactly. Well, yeah, every single um, every single day, she's responsible for doing 10 things and having a checklist of the 10 things that she's supposed to do. Going on a two, a little better than two mile walk with Julie and I is one of them. Well, it really is a hike because the road's here. Nothing is flat. That's um, true. And the next thing is that she's going to be responsible for cleaning her room. She has to do some math problems. She has to do just things to really make it so she doesn't go to pot during the summer, right? Because mm-hmm. she's rolling into third grade. We need a smart, gr- a smart, smart person exactly. as our kid, you know, mm-hmm. and it takes a lot of work. That's right. We don't want her to slide backwards. One of our teachers said that if you just let him run rampant, and we want her to have fun, of course, it's the summer. But her teacher said that if you don't do any of the academic work, that they literally will lose one to two grades when they enter back in, and then they have to relearn everything, and they have to restart, and they lose a lot of time that way. So how's this story related to today's topic, which is your real estate agent's daily success schedule? Well, you're about to learn. (laughs) Um, So how do I keep Zoe, and how do Julie and I keep Zoe Uh, motivated enough to want to do what she doesn't want to do when she doesn't want to do it at the highest level. Well, I went to YouTube and I found a whole series of videos that are about feral humans. (laughs) I (laughs) did. did You guys should do this too. Go to YouTube and and put in feral humans or feral children or whatever. And there are tons. You will be shocked at the number of videos that were uh, stories about people that were essentially went feral, you know, and usually it's kids. They were abandoned somehow and they lived in a jungle they literally in raised by wolves some of them well yeah literally raised by wolves a lot of them that's actually the most common theme is they're raised by wolves and they were walking on all fours they growl and they snarl they turned into wolves and it actually is an interesting um this is kind of interesting fact if you take a normal barnyard pig and you let the pig go wild within like one year the pig starts to grow tusks starts to change color starts to grow long brown hair well, you know, it stands to reason that it wouldn't take too long for humans to go feral as well. <laughs> and, right. that, and really the thing that keeps a, a human from going feral is, you know, society and having a schedule and having all these. See, see how I'm lacing it in there, guys? Well, so I showed jo- uh, Zoe these feral human videos and it turns out, wait for it, wait for it. A lot of these feral humans are right in Appalachia, right where we live, <laughs> right where our little cabin is in, in and around um, this uh, national park. Where is this? What is it called? Nat- Natanhala National Park. Yeah. So Part of we, the Smoky Mountains. So we were explaining to Zoe that essentially if she doesn't do her 10 things every single uh, weekday, we do give her a break on the weekends, that she will most likely go feral and she doesn't want to go feral because she likes her iPad. That's right. <laughs> and they don't have iPads <laughs> when you're living in the woods with the bears. No, they do not. And, yeah. and also that she has to earn to do what she wants to do. She has to do what she doesn't want to do repetitively at a high level so she can move forward. But that also yeah. takes me to the fact that when you look at uh, a kid's, when we were children, you know, mm-hmm. you would go to school, you'd be there by eight o'clock mm-hmm. and you wouldn't be done by three o'clock. And when you were in school for, you know, eight hours or whatever it was, mm-hmm. you were doing usually five to maybe eight different things. Yes. And distinct things. They weren't barely, you know, you go to Spanish, then you go to math and then you go to gym and then you go to this, the other thing. And it's fascinating how kids are raised or essentially kids are trained to be able to do a lot of diverse things every single day and be on a very tight schedule. And as soon as now that takes that a lot of people like that, a lot of people will find that type of schedule and that repetitious, um, you know, sort of well, predictability, right? A lot of people like that. Now, other people, most people that get into real estate are the ones that hated it. Frankly, <laughs> we've noticed a common occurrence in real estate is uh, a lot of folks that get their licenses are the people that do not want to have any sort of discipline, accountability schedule, or anybody asking them anything that's going to resemble a schedule that will always result in failure. Having that mindset and that approach 
will result in people failing out of real estate because life requires, necessitates a schedule. It necessitates the building of certain skills and talents and doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level. And that's what this ideal schedule that we're going to share with you today is all about. And I'm telling you the story about our daughter, Zoe, and you know, her school schedule to remind all of you that every single one of you at one point in your lives, granted it ended when you most of you got out of high school, had daily schedules that were very disciplined and, and very drilled down. So And effective too. Definitely. Well, That's why when you graduate, you know more than when you started. <laughs> exactly. So when we suggest this schedule to you, what you cannot do, and this is what most agents do. Remember, Julie and I have been doing this for 20 years, is most agents will say, I'm too busy, 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 or I have too much going on, or I have this, that, and the other thing. Tons of excuses why you cannot have an excuse, or why you cannot have a schedule, or why you, you cannot be held accountable to getting certain things done every single day. But I want you to remember, when you were a little kid, you were doing those things every single day regardless. Now, here's the difference. Here's where the trouble begins, you might say, for agents, okay? So when you were a kid, it was easier because you had immediate accountability. If you did not switch from math to English at 9 a.m. or whatever the time it was for you, then, you know, that wasn't really an option. You would get in trouble, you would lose your recess, you would get a detention, whatever. And you'd fail. And you would fail. You, I mean, you would stop learning stuff. I don't know if kids fail anymore in school. I'm only <laughs> half joking, but... Back when, you know, the olden days when everything was in black and white, when Julie and I were in school, mm -hmm. if you actually didn't do your coursework and you didn't show up and you didn't participate and you weren't accountable and all the rest of it, you did not progress. And That's again, right. I'm not sure if it works that way anymore. Uh, but I think in most places it does <laughs> yeah. eventually catch up to you. But here's, here's the point I'm trying to make is that when that happened, you had an immediate accountability, right? You were either doing what you're supposed to do or you weren't. The problem in real estate is you can not follow a schedule for many days or months in a row and it does not immediately catch up with you and this is why all of our coaches remind you if you are not being proactive today you can go ahead and fast forward in your calendar 30 60 90 days from now and put a big black x on your calendar this is a day you will not be earning any money you are not going to move yourself forward you're not going towards your goals because you did not have the discipline today. Now that does not mean that you have to make a schedule that's like between nine and nine, 10 a.m. I have to do this. And then when it turns nine, 11, I have to do that. No, but you do have to have a reasonable level of discipline doing the things that actually matter to get you to your goals. Whereas in schedule or school, rather, you had a pop quiz. You were fearful of not having mm -hmm. studied because you might have a pop quiz or you have you, you're tested every, you know, 30, 60, 90 days. So you actually have end dates for when you actually had to have accomplished a certain uh, level of learning. And you don't have that in real estate. And again, the industry is all about feelings and emotions and doing what you want to do and, and follow your dream and your passion and what's your big why. It's not actually about doing what you don't want to do and you don't want to do it at the highest level. And what you guys could have to understand is there is a uh, an approach to being truly happy long term, and I don't, the word happy is overgeneralized, but and we had this conversation with Zoe this morning, yep. right? Mm -hmm. You know, kids nowadays are taught basically their pursuit in life, life is to be happy, but what we are trying to show Zoe and explain to Zoe is being happy, truly happy long term comes on, comes on the other side, doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level and being of service to other people. That's, That's right. the conversation we had on our, you know, two mile sojourn with. Mm -hmm. The midget this morning. Yes. That's yeah. Right. So at the end of the day, guys, this is something that you have innately learned how to do. Now let's reapply it. And then I want you to really think about the compounding effects of having actually followed a schedule every single day. And it does become easier. Now, some of you have schedules only for the uh, beginning part of your day, and then you let your days get railroaded. So as we're going through this, if you find your mind meandering off into all the reasons why you can't do it because you're too busy, 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 remember what we just shared with you. Hopefully you got some laughs out of the stories, <laughs> but here's the bottom line. Don't allow yourself to become a feral human. Get back on a schedule. There you go. Well put. <laughs> all right. 6 a.m. Awake. Same time every day. No exceptions. Now, again, here is where some of the trouble begins. If you are a chronic snooze button pusher, or if you have different rules for when you wake up for different days, we well, only get up at 6 a.m. if you feel like it, if you decide that you might be exercising that day, stop doing that. It's so much easier to just get up at the same time every day. Meditate for 10 minutes prior to your morning routine. Set your mindset on track for success. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I wake up, the first thing I think about is, oh my gosh, I've got to do this, or maybe I've got to pay that bill, or something kind of like stressful pops into my mind. And so I've trained myself to wait 10 minutes, take some deep breaths, think about what you want your day to go like, and then get up. 
Does that make sense? Yeah. It give yourself a little buffer. There's something that's magic that happens between in your, in your mind between when you're completely asleep and when you're completely awake, right? There's a state where you're still basically asleep, but you are uh, aware that you're asleep, but you are aware that if you chose to, you could wake up. You guys know what I'm talking about? In that little sort of uh, no man's land in your mind, that essentially is the same wavelength as if you were meditating. So if you're wondering what it's like to meditate, that's basically meditation. So when you're in that space, what Julie just said is really important. Don't allow these sort of you know to-do items to pop into your head. Start programming your mind to think about how you're going to feel at the end of this day after you've accomplished your three to five things. Think about in your mind who you're going to be and what you're going to look like in a year. Focus on that, but be careful that you don't allow these sort of egotistical fear-based thoughts to creep back in because it'll ruin that opportunity for you to sort of really drill down emotionally with your, your, uh, your goals. And that's really what we're talking about because at the end of the day, when people are talking uh, about the accomplishment of their goals, it's not just this is the goal I'm going to accomplish. The real story, and this is an overused sort of way of thinking about it, but it's in the journey. Like I'm, it's great that you accomplished that big goal, but let me hear about what you took, what it took for you to get there. That's where the real growth is, but that's the part where people want to skip. And I have to say, societally nowadays, most people act like they're doing the hard work, but they don't do the hard work. They want to celebrate the victory. They, they don't know how to never have learned how to, or just avoiding actually doing the real work. And that's the whole Instagram culture. For example, that's the whole you know, essentially what people are trying to do with regards to you know, becoming influencers is they don't want to talk about essentially what it took to make the sausage. They just want to have the sausage kind of thing. And long-term ever increasing levels of success comes from doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level. But there's nobody that's going to celebrate the fact that you meditated this morning for 10 minutes or no one's going to celebrate the fact that you actually went to the gym three days this week opposed to one day a week last week. No one's going to celebrate the fact that you didn't eat a bunch of carbs today. You actually were able to stick to a low carb diet. No one's going to celebrate the tiny little victories because of the fact that that's not how society is hardwired, but it's within those tiny little victories that you're going to find further encouragement and further motivation to progress. So it's important as you're moving through your life that when you accomplish something, even if there's no one around you to celebrate, there's going to be something in your mind that triggers you did it, good job. Even if it's just a passing fleeting thought or emotion, it's important that you reward yourself from actually having done something you didn't want to do when you didn't want to do it at the highest level. And life is full of doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level if you want to be successful. If you want to essentially wonder where your days go, where your life has gone, then just focus on being happy. Don't focus on you know essentially ever increasing levels of success and improving your skill set and your mindset. Don't focus on helping other people. Just focus on your inner emotional state of happiness. You guys get the see how long that you, takes you guys get the out. bouncing back and forth there. So just be aware of it. All right. So now we're at seven a.m. and this assumes a little bit that you're either at your home office or you're using a laptop because this is. Time to get serious. 30 minute financial review. How do you do that? Are you trending up or down versus your financial goals? Now, this assumes that they have financial goals and they have done the real estate treasure map. Are you on track, ahead, or behind? One of the most common questions the coaches use with coaching clients are you on track, ahead, or behind based on your goals? By how much? Take a look at your whiteboards. Another thing we teach you in coaching. What is your appointment schedule? What appointments must you set today? What are you appointments are you going on? This sets your focus for the day because at the end of the day, it is about being profitable. You can talk about having happy clients all you want to, but you are in real estate to be profitable. Now, I'm going to share with you guys a, a mindset shift. Some of you, when you're focusing on your real estate specific goals, you're focusing on units and dollar volume. I'm going to sell 100 units and I'm going to sell, you know, $100 million in, in volume. All right, that's great. But at the end of the day, what is it that you're going to be most proud of having accomplished? Those are great goals to have accomplished. But in the, the accomplishment of that, if you've left along the side of the road, your net profit and having the experiences to reward yourself for the accomplishment of those goals, what was the whole point of accomplishing it in the first place? If you've ruined your marriage or your health or your you know, friendships because you're certainly, you're focused solely on accomplishing this particular goal and you get the plaque, you get the award. Everyone says, you know, you're the greatest thing ever, but you've got no money in the bank. You've not increased your net worth. What's the point? 
that is the reason that when Julie and I take you guys through the whole, you know, essentially the process of goal setting through the real estate treasure map, which is our fill in the blank business and life uh, plan, we always predicated on net profit. We predicated on increasing your net worth. That is something that's unique about our approach because when you are, you know, older and older could be five minutes, it could be 50 years, it could be five years. The thing that you're going to want to look back upon and be truly proud of having accomplished was, and you're a business person, you're here to provide services for other people, is the uh, uh, that, all those emotional responses from having known you essentially have created something that other people have wanted to use, that would be your real estate services. But really, and especially in economic times like this, it's your net worth. It's your net worth. It's how much you've been able to actually create more financial independence and freedom. Uh, and that only comes on the other side of having a service that other people are willing to pay for. The reason that somebody has more than you have at the end of the day is because they figured out how to provide a product or a service, kind of the same thing, that a lot of other people put value on in such a level that they're willing to sell enough of whatever these things are and they're, will, and they're then able to make enough profit that creates abundance in their lives. In other words, they maybe didn't know it, but they started with the idea of how can I help solve other people's problems? When you focus on how to help other people and solve other people's problems, and then you scale that level of thinking, the whole world pivots. You want to, you know, a lot of people talk, make, try to make this metaphysical, you know, a lot of pseudoscience about, you know, you're trying to have the universe bring you what you want and all this other stuff, this, this stuff that Julie and I don't really spend a lot of time on. The whole mindset genre is just rooted in a lot of, frankly, pseudoscience at the end of the day. And we want to keep things practical and tactical, keep you guys into action, making money. But there is something to the fact that if you're locked into your highest and truest purpose on this planet, what makes you feel the most fulfilled and happy is being of service to other people. Then when you're actually realizing that's when you feel most proud of yourself, most happy, there's that word, most in alignment with what your truest purpose is, then naturally you're going to want to progress and you're going to want to learn the skills necessary to be of service to more people because you know the more people you can help, in other words, the more real estate you can, you know, uh, homes you can buy and sell, that's your helping. The more money you're going to make, the more profit you can make. But guys, benchmark all of your business based on your net profit. Your net profit is at the end of the day, your litmus test to how good you are as a real estate practitioner, but also as a business person. Now we are doing our best right now to progress you guys along as fast as possible. That's the reason we've made the first 30 days of Premier Coaching for free. Every single one of you can join Premier Coaching right now, 100% free. We just talked about the real estate treasure map, 90 day massive action plan, the complete notes from our uh, podcast today and all of our podcasts. You get, in addition, a daily semi-private coaching call with one of our hair certified coaches. You get complete access to scripts, objection handlers. You get our social networking, our social media, um, you know, Action plans. Action plans, lead generation plans. There's so much, guys. Obviously, I don't even remember all of it. You get all this for free. No strings attached. Just text the word Premier to 47372. Text the word Premier, P-R-E-M-I-E-R -E -E to 47372. Go ahead and do that now. You can do it while you're listening to us on uh, your iPhone or your uh, Android. Text the word Premier to 47372. We'll text you back a link. You have to text back yes. And then we're going to send you the link to join Premier. If you're outside of the continental United States or you don't want to send a text, that's fine too. Just go to members, members is plural, dot Tim and Julie Harris dot com, members dot Tim and Julie Harris dot com. If you're texting, remember message and data rates may apply. Do that urgently. Re the Premier Coaching is the perfect next step for all of you who are serious about building your business, whether you're a new agent, uh, agent that's been in the business for a long time, does not matter where you are in the success uh, spectrum. Premier Coaching is an excellent next step for all of you. Next point. So now we're at 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. Now, some of you can get ready. This is called prepare for your day. I know some of you can get ready in 15 minutes, especially the men who are listening or people who aren't getting kids out the door. But I gave you an hour long slot to account for everyone, modify as you go, but prepare for your day. Now listen to this point. Of course, breakfast, shower, and dress, but when in doubt, dress for success. Always be dressed one level nicer than your prospect or client. And if you don't have any appointments today, 
dress as if you do anyway, aren't you going to be a lot more likely to actually talk about real estate if you look like the professional that you are working on being? Now, here's the modification part. Some of you like to work out in the afternoons and some of you like to work out in the mornings. Julie's schedule that she's giving you here, remember we were telling you guys can modify for your own uh, situation. Going to the gym in the morning because yeah. you've got kids is not going to work. So you have to go in the afternoons. So you might want to substitute if the kid thing isn't an issue, going to the gym at the morning in the morning from seven to eight. Again, when you're choosing what gym to go to, this is higher level coaching, but it's a great practical way for you to build your centers of influence and past clients. Julie and I are huge advocates of things like Orange Theory and uh, go on different, uh, you know, essentially go at the same time every single day or go Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 7 a.m. and go Tuesdays and Thursdays at say 4 p.m. And then you're gonna meet different groups of people. All these organized workout situations are perfect for creating more centers of influence and past clients. Don't show up late, not talk to someone. You know, your goal is to get there early, get to know everyone there. And your goal is to linger a little bit afterwards, tell, give everyone fist bumps and tell them a good job. And then when they start seeing you on a regular basis, naturally, normally, they're gonna to wanna to bond with you, especially as the endorphins are flying from working out and you're gonna make great real estate clients. The best way some of our uh, newer coaching clients, uh, mm -hmm. new agents, to essentially generate instant real estate leads is doing exactly what we just said. Maybe choose a gym that's in a more affluent area <laughs> where people are gonna be, you know, selling a house and then moving up to another one, just an idea, be, just strate saying, yes. be, be strategic. Well, then that's called habit stacking, right? You're supposed yep. to be working out, taking care of your body and your fitness. At the same time, you can talk about real estate. There you, you go. You guys could even do something like oh, wear a t-shirt that says, ask me about homes or something that ident self identifies you as a real estate agent. Maybe you should actually let the world know that you're in the real estate business opposed to being a secret agent. That's right. Now you're wandering into coaching. So watch that. Okay. So uh, now we're at 8 a.m. Take 20 minutes to clear out any mission critical email, voicemail, text, etc. Delete your trash and spam. Delegate anything you can to your transaction coordinator or personal assistant. And if you don't have those people, then you are those people. So you've got to be really clear and prioritize by urgency and set a plan in place. Lead with dollar productive activity. So that's all about basically getting you ready to launch. Now, if you know that you're uh, emailing and all the things that Julie just said, if you know that emotionally that's going to spin you off in the wrong direction, then do that after you've done the heavy lifting, which is Julie's about to start describing to you. But just remember, you have to adjust accordingly. The point of this is every single day, and I said three to five things, here they are. Your every single morning should be, uh, you know, essentially you should have some form of meditation, some form of prayer perhaps. You should have uh, every single day, you should show gratitude overtly to your family members. If you have a dog and no family members, that's fine. Give your dog a hug. It doesn't matter. You know, say something nice and meaningful to your spouse, to your kids. You guys get the point. You have to do something overt like that. You have to, obviously, every single day, and Julie's going to get to this, you have to make the number of proactive uh, lead generation contacts that are predicated in your real estate treasure map. And again, you can get the real estate treasure map for free when you join Premier Coaching. Just text the word Premier to 47372. Text the word Premier to 47372. We want you to every single day. Now, these are kind of the mandatory ones. These aren't the optional ones. Everything I've said so far, strongly suggested ones, I should say. The next one, because I know some of you hate the idea of someone actually telling you what to do because you're not ready for accountability yet. Mm -hmm. I get it. Okay, so the next thing we're all, we want you to do is very effective lead follow-up using a script during proactive lead follow-up, which uh, leads perfectly into Julie's next 8.30 to 9.30 time block. It's called furiously fast lead follow-up with intent to set appointment. You've got to stop saying the phrase, I got to get through my lead follow-up. The point is not to get through it. The point is to set appointments. Since you're most likely to set an appointment with this category of prospects, it is valuable to pursue them first thing in your day. You have their phone numbers. They're expecting your call. You have what they want. Listings for your buyers and market analysis for your sellers. If you don't have what they want, then maybe that's why you're avoiding your furiously fast lead follow-up. This is a thing that I've had many, many agents tell me when they got real clear and real serious about really being on top of uh, their furiously fast lead follow-up that everything changed in their business they had a 20 or 30% increase almost immediately. The most important thing that you said in with this thing you wrote is, uh, da, 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 where was it? 
since you're most likely to set a point with the category it's valuable we'll pursue them and it, it's over to respect all you call basically julie when you're oh sorry it's the first thing you wrote don't just get through your lead follow-up yes here's the really critical part your goal and any successful real estate practitioner, and this is not somebody who's successful because they had top listing award last year, last month because they listed two homes. I'm talking about someone like when Julie and I sold real estate, 100 to 200 homes a year for almost 10 years. So what was one of the rules that we had for ourselves? We never had a lot of leads because whenever you have a lot of leads, and I want you to think about this, this is the exact opposite of what most of you are being trained to believe that you're supposed to have a crap ton of leads, drop them in a CRM, and then drip on them until the cows come home. <laughs> now, I want you to think about who's trying to get you to do that. It's the people trying to sell you CRMs, the people trying to get you to have drip campaigns. But here's a statistical fact. Do the homework on yourself, uh, yourself or just listen to your coach or your future coach, depending on if you're a premier coaching client or not. Long-term lead follow-up does not work. No, doesn't work to the point where you you literally should not do it. Long-term lead follow-up. If you're look, if you want to have a CRM and you want to completely forget about them, and maybe occasionally when uh, you know when pigs fly, you're going to get somebody that's going to follow up with you. But the reality of it is, is most of you will use, and this is the, the, as a coach, this is what I know, and this is what I this is the reason that Julie and I are absolutely. Um, advocates of being very, you know, proactive with and furiously fast with your lead follow up. What most of you are going to do is you're not going to uh, follow up effectively. You're not going to ask the right questions in the right order. You're not going to root out of them whether they have houses to sell, what their levels of motivation are. What most of you are going to do, if you call them at all, which most of you won't do, is you're just going to put them in a drip campaign and hope this sort of magical, myth mythical drip campaign is going to eventually over time drip on them enough, send them enough you know, tchotchkes that they're going to want to raise their hand and say, yes, I want to do business with you, Bob. That is not the way life works. And the reason is, is because the really good trained agents are calling this, calling, calling, calling those people back right away, asking the right questions, finding out if they have houses to sell, getting the homes listed, getting the homes sold. Those sellers then become buyers and you're still dripping on them after they've bought and sold five other homes over the years. You guys get it? Your goal is not to have a lot of leads. Your goal is to have a lot of actual customers. And in order to do that, you have to ask them the right questions and specifically listings. Listings are the litmus test of your real estate business. Do you have listings or are you just still thinking you're going to make ends meet working primarily with buyers? You can work with buyers, absolutely. But a real long-term, you know, if you want a long-term sustainable business in real estate, which is essentially something that you truly can be proud of because it produces consistent cash flow, that is only going to be achieved when you become a listing agent. But I want you to remember what your coach or maybe your future coach, that's what we are, just said to you. Your goal is not to have a lot of leads. So what's a lot of leads? If you have more than probably 10, maybe even eight leads, you're not doing something right. When I have a conversation with an agent, I ask them how many leads they have. I, this is the recent phenomena. They all with a very prideful look on their faces, start telling me about their hundreds, if not thousands of leads they have in their CRM. Right. And I instantly know that's a low skilled agent. That's an agent that does not call people back, does not know what to say. Trying to avoid conversations are going to result in that. Ideally, that seller listing their home with them because they don't know what to do or don't know how to do it. And they've rationalized not doing the real work of real estate because they say they're too busy, busy, busy. They got other things going on. Well, guess what? That means that somebody else who's that much more aggressive is going to get the business from you. And this is the reason why when we have new agents, brand new licensees, who join our coaching program, we teach them this right away. They get it right away because they're not distracted with a bunch of bad ideas. They haven't gone to a bunch of seminars and been brainwashed by CRM salespeople telling them never to call people and all the rest of this Mickey Mouse. And those new agents, what they'll do, they get a lead. They're on that lead. They ask the questions. They ask the questions in the order in which they're supposed to be asked. They then determine that that's a seller. They get the house listed. They get the transaction happening. And then the grizzled veterans over time, you guys start seeing these new agents take little at first micro bites out of your market, then bigger bites, then bigger bites. And then you see, you know, three to five years from now, these new agents are all of a sudden the dominant agents and you've fallen from grace. That happens all the time. Why does it happen? Because the you forgot grizzled veteran agent, what it took to get you there in the first place. And it's these basics like what we're sharing with you now. Furiously fast lead follow up with the intent to, with the intent to set an appointment. Your your goal is not to generate a lead. Your uh, uh, goal is to generate a pre qualified appointment. Next point, Julie. Speaking of pre qualification, you were talking about asking the right questions to determine if they are going to make you an, into an appointment. So remember to pre qualify all listing and buyer leads prior to setting that appointment. 
Do not skip that step. Do not just throw them into your CRM and call them a lead. You should never, ever, ever end the day or even the morning with leads that you've not followed up on. So use our proven lead follow-up scripts followed by the buyer and seller pre-qualification scripts. Have them printed and ready to use. This question came up on our private members page for our coaching clients this morning to which I said, yes, we've done podcasts on this, but the scripts are what you need. Go to the website, drill down and use them. So that's what, one of the things we do in coaching. And if you find yourself, again, this is really important, guys. If you find yourself generating leads and you're not calling them back urgently and you're not asking the tough questions to find out what their level of motivation and readiness is, you're not doing your job. You're not doing the most basic job. And to what Julie said earlier, you're not going to pay the price for that 10 minutes from now or maybe even, a, you know, not even maybe a month from now, but you're gonna pay the price because you're not gonna have enough closings. You're going to have a financial issue in the future because you weren't willing to do the real work of real estate now. All this should happen in the morning. That's right, which leads us to 9.30 a.m. Guess what? More lead follow-up if you have the leads to follow up on, but if not, it's time for, you guessed it, proactive lead generation. Choose your most likely to list spokes take first. A step, take a step back. So mm -hmm. you said if they don't have enough uh, leads to follow up on. So what you're saying, and we should really drill down on this, yep. is their goal ultimately, and this is what we coach them to do, is to set one pre-qualified listing appointment a day. That's right. That's what we are. That's our goal with you guys, is every single day you're going to set one pre-qualified listing appointment a day. Now, what Julie is saying is if you are able to set your pre-qualified listing appointment from your very aggressive and effective lead follow-up, then guess what? You can then treat your prospecting a little bit because you've accomplish that day's goal. Now, the problem is, is if you stop generating new leads, then you're not going to have any leads to follow up on. So just be careful. But your goal every single day is to set one pre-qualified listing appointment. We show you how to do that in Premier Coaching. We show you what to say, how to say it, how to pre-qualify. We give you a pre-listing pack. We give you the listing appointment. We tell you every single micro step. We tell you exactly what to do when you go to that seller's door for your listing appointment. We tell you what to wear. We tell you where to stand. We Just like you were back in school, guys, we tell you every single tiny little thing that's going to happen so you don't have to worry about showing up uh, essentially uh, being flat-footed. We are going to walk you through in coaching every single tiny little micro step. We're going to tell you what the seller is going to do and say before you even get there. So do not be intimidated by going on listing appointments because listings are the leverage of real estate. That's right. So proactive lead generation, choose your most likely to list sources first. And that does mean unrepresented sellers, you know, for sale by owners, expireds, probate, open house leads. It just makes sense to speak with people who need your expertise. Remember, if you've generated enough leads to follow up on, do that first. There is a saying when you generate, you don't have to tolerate. You don't have to tolerate being broke. You don't have to tolerate working with people who aren't real clients. But here's the secret, because people will ask, well, how do I know how many contacts to make? Contact at least the number of people daily that equals the number of transactions required by, you guessed it, your real estate treasure map, because you won't know your number if you haven't done your treasure map. For example, if you have to do 18 transactions to meet or exceed your financial goals, you must make 18 real contacts daily to be on track for that goal. Now, as your skills increase, that number usually decreases. So somebody who's really skilled, and, and this does go back to our, our going to school point, right? So when you're in say, you know, 11th grade, you're doing a lot more advanced math, a lot faster than when you were figuring it out in say sixth grade, right? Because you have that accumulation effect of doing what you were supposed to do at school every day when it was math class. Well, the conversations that we have with agents who are skilled and who have actually been proactive for a long time, you know, a lot of them can make 10 contacts instead of listing appointments. Well, what it all rolls back to, Julie, is the four levels of mastery, right? Yep. So it goes unconscious incompetence, conscious incompetence, conscious incompetence, then conscious competence. Did I get that right? You're pretty close. I think yeah. I got that right. <laughs> yeah. So the gist of it is, is everyone starts out the same place where they don't know that they don't know anything, right? So you, most of you are listening to this podcast. You're right at that phase. You're well, I didn't know that. You're essentially, you're having neurons you know, connect for the first time. Oh, okay, this makes sense. This makes sense. So now you're going from the not knowing what you don't know phase to the knowing what you don't know. That second phase, that's when you should join coaching. Well, you should really join it right at the beginning stage to save a lot of effort. But right when you're at the conscious incompetence, you know there's a lot you don't know and you want to figure out how to know it right away because the stage after that is conscious competence. That's when things almost feel like they're happening on autopilot. You don't have to think about it. So when Julie and I are walking you through 
uh, when you're learning, for example, how to go on a listing appointment or you're learning how to pre-qualify someone, you're learning how to actually, you know, read the script. The first time it's going to feel clunky. The first time it's going to feel unnatural. You're going to be embarrassed. Who cares? Do it anyway. You know, one was born to this life of mas master, you know, mastering anything. I was going to make a funny baby <laughs> joke how they don't know how to do anything, but still yeah. they, some things are very good at right out of the hatch. Screaming is one of them. <laughs> but that aside, right? Zoe was very good at that. Excellent at that. Uh, excellent screamer. <laughs> You should tell them the wine list. So Zoe came up with a little <laughs> menu for us last night. She did this on her own. So she gives us a, a handwritten piece of paper and go ahead. And she says, uh, she says, here's your wine list. And we're like, cool, you know, bring me a Chardonnay or something. She, but no, she meant W-H-I-N-E. <laughs> and she gave four or five options like, uh, what was it? The screaming wine, the quiet wine, the uh, loud and annoying wine. And she actually had examples worked out of what each one of those sounded like. Yes, she did. And that was what we dealt with last night. Yeah. And no, our eight and a half year old does not bring us wine. Let's be clear about that. No, but yeah. she, she does love to play on words all the time. Yeah, and that's does. what we get for, you know, teaching her to read. But there you are. Exactly. Okay. So here we are at 1030 a.m. Call your required past client and center of influence contacts. You guys call that your database. Take the total number of people on your list divide by either 20 working days, 40 working days, or 60. That means every 30 days. Well, I'll explain this in a second. But this will determine how many you're going to call daily to contact your sphere, say, every 90 days or less. So here's the example. Let's say you've got 100 people on your list, your database, right? Past clients, center of influence. You're going to divide that by 20 working days. There are 20 working days in every month. We take out the weekends. And you have to then you have to speak with five people per day you'll be able to actually touch your entire list monthly. If you take 100 people, you're only talking to them on working days, that's five people a day, you're gonna to talk to your whole 100 person database every 30 days. What would your business look like then? Now we are talking about calling people, having conversations. We know that there are a lot of you who do not want to talk to people because you do not know what to say or how to say it. And this was going back to the four levels of learning because after you've essentially progressed then the, the level four is where you're unconsciously competent, where you don't have to think about what you're going to say next. Whatever pours out of your mouth is brilliant and gets the job done. But you're never going to have that level of mastery unless you actually are doing the fundamentals first to learn what you, you know, work through, accepting the fact that there's a lot you don't know. Okay, well, that's true with anything that when you're learning anything new. And all of you guys are, you know, if you're new in real estate or if you're coming into this, uh, discovering Julie and I for the first time, many of you are going to struggle with that second level of learning because you're going to have to, uh, essentially, you're going to have to be deprogrammed because a lot of you who have been in this business for a long time have been led to believe that the way you earn your success is through being an influencer, creating a lot of videos or doing these other things. No one's ever told you guys about the disciplines of a schedule. No one's ever shared with you guys the disciplines of learning how to pre-qualify people, how to set an appointment, all the little micro steps of doing everything that you're supposed to be doing to be successful long-term in real estate. If you were, you know, back in school and you decided you want to become a, you know, Zoe told me this morning, did I tell you? Mm -hmm. She wants to start being on the swim team, right? Oh. And okay. I thought, well, that would be all, that would be just ideal, right? Yeah. Because swimming is a really hard thing to get correctly because mm -hmm. I've tried it technical, before. Sure, it's sure. very technical. You have to show up in, you know, early in the morning. Um, the you water's know, you, cold. The water's cold. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Nobody's in a good mood. But wow, what a great thing. And just to essentially have gotten your mind and your body in alignment with a coach constantly watching you and monitoring you. Well, that's, if you're not willing to do that, she's never going to win any swim competitions, assuming she stays with it. And considering she's eight and a half, she probably won't. But this is really what it all comes down to is, are you willing to really put in the effort? Like I asked my, um, I asked somebody in our, um, one of our new member coaches, I said, when you talk to 10 people about joining premier coaching and we have three or four that will join, why don't the other five or six join? Like I thought I knew the answer, but I wanted to hear mm -hmm. him say it. And he was relatively new to our team. He is Andrew. And he told me straight up, he said, it's because they are not serious about their businesses or they're not serious about essentially being successful. They're just looking for quick fixes. They're looking for shiny objects or all. The, yes, that's exactly what I expected him to say. And it does not come as a surprise. But for the rest of you who want to be in this business long term, it doesn't it make sense that you're going to learn the skill set that not just this market, but any market require. That's the reason we're giving you premier coaching for free. Just text the word premier to 47372 or go to members dot Tim and Julie Harris dot com. All right. So here we are at 1130 a.m. Think of what you've already done and it's only 1130 a.m. But assess your day so far. Have you set any appointments yet? 
If no appointments yet, proceed to continued lead follow-up and or proactive lead generation. Remember that your most important job every day is to generate new business. Again, most of our coaching clients, at least the ones that have been with us for a little bit, are setting one new appointment before noon, ideally a listing appointment, but obviously there are other types of appointments, right? Let's give them some numbers. So when someone's been in coaching for a long period of time and they've been very uh, studious at staying with- Coachable. The, coachable, and they've been very focused on becoming very prolific lead generators, proactive lead generators, and they're calling all the sources that we tell them to call. Generally speaking, they're gonna start setting one pre-qualified listing appointment for every seven contacts. Now you can do all, it, getting, remember guys, four stages of learning, right? So moving past the resistance that's natural and the uncomfort level or the discomfort level that's natural and moving past that into the point where you are essentially becoming good at something, that's what all of you need to push towards no matter what. Look, maybe real estate's not for you. Maybe you're not going to be in real estate in a year. Maybe you're going to go off to something else. Whatever that next thing is, or you know, frankly, hopefully most of you are trying to make real estate your thing. This is really the truth. This is the bottom line of what's going to take to make you successful. It's not buying more leads. Buying more leads is just like a caffeine hit. What you want is you want to build a real business, something that produces a consistent number of transactions, a consistent amount of profit. With that profit, you reinvest. And with that reinvestment, you become rich. Rich is, you know, it's simple. Where your money works for you and you no longer work for your money. Now, here we are entering into or we're in a recession. How much better would you feel right now having an actual plan of what you're supposed to be doing next? Having an actual plan and how you can actually, uh, you know, really frankly, be in true, the highest alignment with your, your true purpose on this planet, which is being of service to other people. That's what coaching is all about. But guys, just be very, very clear. Real estate is a simple business if you keep focused on the basics. As soon as you start adding in teams and branding and marketing, especially in a market like this, that's where you're going to lose too much time and chances are you're going to fail out of the business. This is not the time for luxury thinking. This is the time for practical, tactical, drilled down. This, my efforts equal my results. If you cannot see a direct correlation between your effort and your results in 90 days, stop doing it. If someone hits you up and says, we want to start some new campaign for you. We want to take over your Instagram profile. We want to get you a bunch of followers. Your brain needs to say, why the hell does that matter? And if you cannot say more specifically, will that result in real estate transactions? Show me, explain to me explicitly how that, how having, you know, 10,000 more followers is going to result in me having, you know, more uh, real estate transactions. They can't, they won't because it doesn't. And I look on, for example, I look on YouTube, you know, Julie and I really focus on building our YouTube channel. We've got the number one listened to daily podcast for real estate agents in at least the United States. Julie and I can get analytics on all the top, say 10 uh, YouTube real estate coaches. There's a lot of frankly, inexperienced new agents that are calling real estate coaches. That's fine. We can look at their analytics and we can see what they're doing is they are buying followers. They're buying views. You can buy all that on YouTube. You can actually go to websites and they will essentially have bots go to your YouTube channel and quote unquote, view your videos to run your view count up, run your subscriber list up. We went and found somebody who was actually adding, what was it? Every week? Every a thousand new followers a week, exactly seven days apart. Exactly. You explain so, that other yeah. than buying them. Obviously. Right. So that's somebody who's trying to uh, essentially fool you guys into you know, feeding into your belief that the more followers, you see what they're doing? They're manipulating. The more followers that somebody has, the more views that somebody has, the more valid that they are. Well, it, do you believe that's true for you? Or do you believe what really matters isn't all that sort of, uh, you know, what, what do you want to call it? vanity numbers? What really matters is the number of people you help and the amount of net profit you make. Do not conflate the two. One does not equal the other. So at 12.30 p.m., lunch. Yes, actually eat lunch, ideally with a past client, a current client, etc. Have lunch, brunch, you know, even coffee with somewhere in your market where you can be out and about actually talking about real estate. Remember your script. Whom do you know who I should be helping to buy or sell real estate? 
Most of our coaching clients are doing this on a very regular basis. It is in their schedule and they actually are absolutely getting results that are predictable and duplicatable. 130, check in with your transactions, your team, your staff, if you have any, your co-op agents, et cetera. Now, if you are at eXp and you are using one of their transaction coordinators, check in with your transaction coordinator, but always, always be in contact with your actual clients. Do not ever delegate, especially when they're um, in contract, basically, when their listing is or their buyer side is pending. Do not delegate the emotional support to a subordinate. They will hate you for it. They will not send you referrals because yep. you are abandoning them at what to them is the most stressful part of the entire transaction. Yes, you can delegate the meat and potatoes. We encourage you to do so. And if you're an eXp Realty agent, you can actually hire uh, one of eXp Realty's excellent transaction coordinators for 250 bucks. And you want to guys here, listen to this. Yeah. You can then margin that. You can actually charge you know, 450 bucks, or we know someone that's charging a thousand dollars. They're paying, you know, 250 to have the transaction closed, but, uh, by, uh, the transaction coordination system, the, the uh, people there, and they're charging a thousand dollars. So they're making the difference and that goes to their profit. 2 to 5 p.m., Julie. 2 to 5 p.m. is appointment time. If you don't have appointments, you have options, but they all center around being proactive. Appointments are best, especially listing appointments, but after that, it's time for calling your sellers, setting up showings, previewing, doing price reductions, scheduling open houses, creating marketing plans, et cetera. But most importantly, it is back to proactive lead generation, especially if you have made it to two o'clock without setting a new appointment. Now that right there, what Julie just said is critical. If at the end of the day, and this is if I were personally coaching, which I'm not doing anymore, but if I were, this is what I did with all my top coaching clients. If they did not set a pre-qualified listing appointment in the morning, they had to set the pre-qualified listing appointment in the evening. If they did not set a pre-qualified listing appointment at either time, then they had to do it on Saturday morning. I mm -hmm. intentionally designed it so that there are ever increasing levels of discomfort the longer they procrastinated <laughs> setting that listing appointment. And you know what they all did after a while? They, they set it in the morning. They got a lot better, a lot faster. And, and now, but I'll, with that said, there are often times in certain markets where people have to get up super duper early and you're not calling that early, where you can call in the evenings and you'll actually get better results. And no, not the calling Saturday mornings meant to be a punishment because you will also find you, you will have an easier time uh, making contacts when you call Saturday morning. Now you want the real special time to call? Here it is, write this down, never forget it. It's on, during any time where there's a holiday at the end or beginning of the following month. So for example, right now we have, uh, like let's pick a real good one, July 4th. July 4th essentially is the end of, you know, obviously June, beginning of July. So you will have more than an, a uh, normal amount of expires because a lot of agents mistakenly don't do this. Listeners mistakenly set their um, listings to end expire at the end of the month. Don't do that listeners. Okay. Uh, now, because then that's when essentially you're going to get the most amount of people prospecting. So you set your listings to expire, say in the middle of the month, just as a, for example, and have them set on like a Monday or something. So if it's over um, at the end of the month, beginning of the month, over a holiday uh, event, you're going to get more contacts because people are not working. And generally speaking, they're going to be in better moods until, you, of course, you know, you are calling them and letting them know that their previous listing agent didn't call them to let them know their house was expired. And we just tell you what to say and how to say it so that you can convert that into an appointment. But the real special sauce in making all this work is your competitors. And there are things in life called competitors are not calling because they're at the beach or they're making hot dogs where you're doing the real work of real estate. You're making contacts with all the expired listings just to use that as an example. But this is true with any of the 20 different proactive lead sources we teach you to do in Premier Coaching. So just keep all this in mind. Your goal, and we again teach you to do this in Premier Coaching, is to build the number of listings that you need and, and maintain it at all times. So let's say for example, you have a average sale price of $500,000. And let's say, just to keep the math simple, not talking about commissions, let's say your average commission is 15 grand. Let's say it costs you $15,000 per month to pay all your business and personal bills. I'm just making numbers up just to keep it easy. So if you had, let's say, for example, five listings at all times, is it safe to say listeners that you would have at least one house in contract at all times? So if you had five listings at all times, 
And let's say maybe two of them are coming on the market, three of them are active, right? Mm -hmm. One, you know, one of them's brand new, one of them has been on the market for two weeks, but you're going to have at least one house and contract, at least one house and contract at all times, if you had five listings at all times. That is our magic number formula. You have to go through the math and know how to actually figure out what your magic number of listings is at all times. But this is the reason we want you to have the listings-based business. When Julie and I sold real estate, our average sale price when we first got into the business was probably 175. And then it was like 250 and then went all the way up to 650. So our magic number formula, uh, you know, obviously it changed the number of listings we needed at all times to meet or exceed our financial goals. You need to know this number and then you need to do and use all your best energies every single day to build to your magic number. That is the essence of a successful real estate business. It is not more complicated than that. And by the way, I said one listing in contract, five listings. One in contract means you have 15 grand coming in. I did not mention buyers because when you start getting really prolific at listing and staying, so your life becomes um, selling the listings you have, servicing the heck out of those sellers, replace the listings that sell. Once you get really comfortable and efficient at this, you do not, if you choose not to, have to work with any buyers. Now, we don't suggest that, but some of you will be very motivated to get your listing count up so you don't have to work with buyers anymore. So for those of you, there's your path, uh, there's your, 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 your way forward. But if you wanna, you know, we will suggest that you do uh, have a, maybe two buyers, even after you become a very prolific listing agent, because it does, buyers do keep you on top of what's going on in the market, but be very choosy. Maybe it's one of your sellers that has to buy. That's right. By having those listings, you'll naturally have some of them that will be buying with you. All right. So remember, 2 to 5 p.m., if you're not going on appointments, you are setting appointments. And if you get bored or unproductive with your normal routine, break out of it by going after a new spoke like probate or new construction or for rent by owners or setting up your next open house using, of course, our open house systems and scripts. And Tim, I, I wanted to make sure that they, they cut, you were talking about uh, finding expireds and, and people, you know, on those Monday holidays, like the 4th of July or something like that. But adding a weekday evening and a Saturday or Sunday morning or afternoon, because you guys constantly complain about having to leave voicemail all day long. Well, probably if you keep calling the same person at 10 a.m., they're at work. How many of them are doing, that? Of them are doing well, that on purpose? How, well, exactly. How many of them are actually calling because they know no one's going to answer because they know they're all at work, so they don't actually have Conflict to have Conflict avoiding. Exactly. Creative well, avoidance. But Julie, where this all goes back to is when you're starting anything new, uh, you're going to have to work harder for longer periods of time, that is the truth. It's not some, you know, feel good Mickey Mouse, you know, the world's gonna, the universe is just gonna, you know, drop rose petals at your feet. <laughs> the reality of it is, is when you're learning anything new, you're going to, it's going to require more effort than you think it should. It's going to take longer than you think it should, but the payoff is worth it. And you'll find that the more successful you become, the fewer competitors you have, because by the time you've gotten very efficient at listing property, you'll discover that there's, that's, this is the reason when you go to a housing market, you see generally speaking that there'll be three dominant listing agents in any sort of mature housing market, maybe four, depending on how big it is because all the age, other agents never started or never, they just gave up. They didn't actually put in the effort necessary. And I think like uh, Rob Johnson, who Julie and I coached for a long time in Greenwich, Connecticut, one of the most competitive markets. Inside, I think five or six years from essentially what he was, was a new agent. He became the number one listing agent with his brokerage, which was the number one brokerage in that particular market. And this is one of the toughest, hardest uh, markets to get any kind of stranglehold in. The average sale price there is, I, I bet you now it's six or seven million. Yeah. And you're talking about the, you guys have heard the term blue blood. Well, <laughs> everyone who has uh, been, yeah. you know, general, they, you're talking about families that have gone back from the Mayflower that live in Greenwich, Connecticut. The wealthiest billionaires in the world live in Greenwich, Connecticut. They all know each other. It's, if you were going to have a challenge, that would be the market to be a challenge in if you were to become a listing agent. How did he do it? He just realized he took, essentially, he looked for the cracks in the established agent's um, business models. And they weren't very good at lead follow-up. They weren't very good at pre-qualifying. They were assumptive when they, they were, showed up. Exactly. They were assumptive. They weren't actually asking for the business. And we taught Rob some good old-fashioned sales skills of, you know, fall, you know, with a lot of furiously fast lead follow-up and things like that. And guess what? The sellers loved it. He became very effective at getting listings, then incredibly effective at selling listings. And now I think he's probably going to do $200 million in, in volume this year. That's amazing. It is. Go Rob. Okay. So, and you for being his coach. All right. So from five to 6 PM, tie down loose ends. This is really important. 
Any negotiations should be resolved and sent to the other side so that they'll owe you a response in the morning, not the other way around. If you are tired of negotiating something at 9 p.m., stop leaving offers open until 9 p.m. It just makes sense, right? So put it in somebody else's court and update your whiteboards and get ready for a productive day tomorrow. Now that leads us to 6 p.m. Quit in time. Again, you can slide this a little bit, maybe a half hour either way, but have a regular quitting time. Your family will thank you for having a consistent end of your day and you will be running a more professional operation. Remember to say in your voicemail message, if you're leaving me a message after normal business hours, please leave me your number where I may reach you in the morning. If you're tired of working in the evening, then be more efficient about how you're running your business. So I wrote down at the end to conclude, remember the seven P's of real estate. Proper previous planning prevents pitifully poor performance. That means, yes, you do have to have a schedule. Your schedule has to be full of dollar productive items if you consider moving forward and meeting or exceeding your goals. And Tim, as you said at the top of this podcast, if you don't care about any of that, then you know just go blowing in the wind and see how that works out. The problem with not following a schedule in real estate is that it takes a while to catch up with you. You can be goofing off without really noticing it. You can be running a nonprofit without noticing it until 30 days from now, the market corrects you and then you don't have any closings. So I heard something just along the lines of it catches up with you. There's mm-hmm. so many agents right now that are being told they need to be creating videos on TikTok. Yeah. Okay, we're not gonna waste too much time talking about that, but I wanna share with you guys a little something, something that's gonna be around the bend. It turns out TikTok, as many of you may, well, many of you probably don't know, is essentially owned by uh, the Chinese government. And so it turns out, even though the servers for TikTok are in the United States, that the Chinese government and employees at TikTok have been saying this is true, have been monitoring everyone on TikTok. In other words, they're not just, who knows how um, subversive their information gathering on your children most likely has been creating TikTok videos, but here's absolutely what's going to happen, um, especially after midterms. The US government is going to ban TikTok because TikTok is essentially spying on American citizenry. Well, stop there for a second. How do they do that? If the app is on your phone, and remember all the things that your phone does, it can see where you've been, what you've looked at, what your location right. is geographically. Anything that's on your phone is trackable. And they're not even sure it's not spying on your other apps. For example, right. they're not even sure it's not looking at your pictures, not reading your texts, not creepy. reading your emails. It's creepy. It's totally, yeah. it's, it is what it is. They're, yeah. You are voluntarily choosing to share your personal information. What are they doing with it? Well, they're probably doing a lot of manipulation, political manipulation. They're probably sowing the seeds of discontent. Who the hell knows? The moral of the story is, is you can pretty much see on the horizon and the near horizon at that, that TikTok is going to be essentially obliterated from uh, the United States. That is most likely going to happen sometime I would venture a guess the next six to 12 months. You watch. It's going to be a political hot button and it's going to all of a sudden be you know, deleted from everyone's phones. How many of you have been wasting time creating TikTok videos, hoping and praying that once you create this mountain of you dancing around with your cat, that somehow magically people are going to start calling you to list their house versus having spent the time to wake up every single morning, knowing what to say, knowing what, how, you know, how to say it knowing that you are a professional. Stop looking for shortcuts. So for the five of you of the 10 that we're gonna talk to today about joining Premier Coaching, welcome to Premier Coaching. For the other five of you, I ask you why. Why is it that you're not serious about your business? And I get it, being serious about something, committing to something means you're vulnerable to failing. I get it, but what's your option? Guys, if you say I'm going to make real estate my thing, this is the thing of all things I'm gonna be the most proud of ever having done, you know, in my business, uh, you know, life, then put the line in the sand, put the flag on the ground and make yourself the best version of yourself as a real estate practitioner, create something that you're going to be proud of, that your children are going to be proud of your grandchildren. They're going to make campfire songs about you, (laughs) right? You guys get it now, by the way, where do you get the leads? We get that question a lot. All that information is available on premier coaching. There's a lot of great services out there that Julie and I have vetted over the years that will give you the access to the expireds, the for sale by owners, the notice of defaults, the, you know, the probate listings, all that stuff is available on Premier Coaching. You guys get that free the second you enroll. So text the word Premier to 47372. There is no obligation. There are no strings attached. Just text the word Premier to 47372. Remember, message and data rates may apply. If you're outside the continental United States or if you just prefer not to text, that's fine too. 
just go to members.timandjulieharris.com. You guys have a fantastic day. We'll talk with you on the show tomorrow. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.